about Leopold's Book Bar Cafe. It's Madison's bookstore for night owls, open till midnight every night. They've got lunch now, and starting next month, dinner next door at their sister restaurant, Fabiola's Spaghetti House and Deli. Leopold's is also perfect for holiday gifts, by the way, with over 5,000 books and hundreds of wines. Head over to Greenbush and stop in at Leopold's. Today on CityCast Madison. Act 10, the landmark 2011 law, gutted collective bargaining rights for nearly all public union employees in Wisconsin. The law survived multiple legal challenges over the past decade, but several unions have filed a new lawsuit against Act 10 in Dane County Court. So what's different now? We sit down with Peggy Wirtz Olson, president of the Wisconsin Education Association Council, one of the groups a part of the new challenge, to get the answer. It's Monday, December 11th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Peggy, hello. Good morning. Good morning. So what would it mean for you as a teacher to have Act 10 gone? Well, it would certainly mean that educators, teachers like me who've who've spent over 20 years in the classroom would have the opportunity to negotiate with our employers again around things like working conditions, our students' learning conditions, school hours, healthcare within um, our family's circumstances. All of those things would be within our opportunity again. So how is Act 10 unconstitutional? Well, Act 10 is unconstitutional, certainly, because there are no real substantial distinctions between the favored class of workers that were created in the law and the disfavored class of workers that the law created. There's really no rational relationship between the stated budgetary objectives of the law or any other legitimate state purpose that this law does. And Act 10 has been in effect for a decade now. It's been sued over many times. What's different about this lawsuit from the past challenges? Well, certainly we've already talked today about those substantial distinctions and Really, that lack of distinction between employees who carry out the traditional public safety functions, some of those employees are granted bargaining rights, some other workers like corrections officers are not granted bargaining rights, right? So so at the heart, really, of this particular litigation is around those particular distinctions. For us, for me, as a teacher working with my educator colleagues all across the state, the time is now and has to be now. The attract and retain side of the education profession is really something we've struggled with. And in the news, we're really educators' wages not keeping up with the inflationary pressures we've seen in in our state for the last decade. So bringing the most qualified teacher, educator, support staff member into every school and in front of every child is what's at stake right now. Would it the law be constitutional if it was applied to every industry equally? So for example, if police face the same restrictions as teachers? I know that when I consider the importance of every worker, whether that's um, anyone in in an industry in the state of Wisconsin and the safety that they bring within those spaces, right? What we want to be clear about is that if Wisconsinites value safe workplaces, right, then having the ability for workers in any industry in Wisconsin, public workers to be the strongest advocates for public safety is the move for Wisconsin to make, period. The fact that it's here, if it was applied to police officers, you would say that they wouldn't be able to advocate for the sort of safety needs for you know their industry. Absolutely, right? What is, what is at stake in Wisconsin is really the ability for 
all workers to be the strongest advocates that they can be on behalf of public safety. And in my field, right, for educators to have that opportunity to be the strongest advocate they can be for school safety, for student safety, for the kinds of classroom learning conditions that our students need in order to be successful. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. Rehearsals for the school play were really coming along. Bigger smile, Mr. Squirrel. Until a custodian accidentally threw away the costumes. Oh, no. Everyone was rattled. Miss Garrity forgot how to play. And the queen of the hedgehogs almost quit. Find a new queen. But replacement costumes were shipped with FedEx. And with added peace of mind from picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. What do you hope comes out of this lawsuit? We hope out of this lawsuit is going to be that opportunity for educators like me to be the strongest advocates possible for students in our schools. When we have the highest quality educator in front of every student in every classroom in Wisconsin, I know that we are doing Wisconsin proud. Absolutely. And, you know, overturning Act 10 would mean teachers would have more ability to negotiate with their school districts for things like pay, too, their benefits, working conditions. Um, But the districts are still facing budget realities, you know, like local revenue limits and in some cases declining tax bases. Can many of communities afford to pay teachers more? I know that's certainly one of the calls. Well, absolutely. And and we certainly recognize the funding formula, as complicated as it is, um, could use adjustment, right, in terms of really equitably dealing with the state across the board to ensure that every student in every school district has the resources needed to be successful in Wisconsin. And so that is is a piece of it. I know that um, funding two school systems has certainly been a problem in dealing with the state budget. So public schools where the majority of our students reside are are at odds, right, with a, a second funding stream that's coming right out of the tax base for the voucher schools. So Certainly an eye to Wisconsin doing the best that it can to fully fund our public school system across the state. Here in Madison, teachers got an 8% raise this year. That might be on, on folks' mind. And that's after negotiating with the school board. So a favorable outcome for them. Why do you think more districts weren't able to do the same thing You know, across the state? Well, I commend um Madison, right around that 8% raise, because we know that keeping educators in in the workforce, right, does come down, a piece of it comes down to compensation. So I applaud uh, Madison in that regard and the advocacy of the Madison Teachers Incorporated, their union, who was a strong advocate to ensure that that happened. Across Wisconsin, right, as, as we've referenced already in today's conversation, the funding formula is complicated, and um, it could take us a, a whole half-hour call just to unpack all the nuance in terms of education funding within the formula. You know, certainly we have municipalities across the state that have faced those increasing pressures with funding. The state needs to step up and really do its part, but really at the core, Beyond solving the complexity of the funding formula or making some modifications to change it, right? I think community by community, they certainly um, need more help from the state in order to be able to do what we've talked about today, which is having the strongest education in their local districts that they can. And and towards that end, I guess having a, a better sense of, and there have been these discussions, but can you talk about how 10 years of Act 10 has impacted public schools? Certainly. We know the impact has been 
has been substantial. You know, I know the Wisconsin Public Policy Forum last week put out their study around how educators' wages have certainly not kept pace with inflation. 10 years of an erosion in compensation has led to educators leaving the profession at an alarming rate. Um, And educators who enter, we'll call it the pipeline into teaching, who leave our state for other states um, or determine at the end, given the opportunities in the private sector for for them to join the workforce, that they go through a teacher prep program and then don't end up in a classroom. So we have seen a real um, loss in the educator workforce across Wisconsin, and that has a tremendous impact on every single student in every school district. So if Act 10 were overturned tomorrow, how long might it take to fully restore any damage that's been done? That's a great question. Without a crystal ball, you know, I I definitely um, don't want to stipulate the amount of time, but but I do know that when when I think about the students that I teach and when I think about the students across Wisconsin, this would be a step forward to attracting educators into the profession and ultimately to keeping the the most qualified educator in front of every student every day. And what I always say to our educators coming in is how important this work is on behalf of our local communities and on behalf of our entire state. There's no more important profession. I'm going to say that as an educator. I am with you. (laughs) Than the work they do. And in terms of building, um, building a strong Wisconsin and really having a state that reaches its, its potential, that the strongest educator in front of every single child in Wisconsin makes a tremendous difference to each of us across the state. Well, Peggy, thank you so, so much for giving us your time today. Uh, We super appreciate it. Well, thank you for the invitation. That's Peggy Wirtz Olson, president of the Wisconsin Education Association Council. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with your favorite teacher, nurse, or tradesman? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then.